Our teens are in crisis, and this week KSL is highlighting solution-based efforts to help our youth. We found the state earmarked funding for mental health screenings in schools. Well, Dini spoke with a state lawmaker who wants to know why so many schools are not using the money, Dini. Especially since schools routinely screen for vision and hearing problems. Why wouldn't schools do the same for arguably their biggest health risk of all? We asked several districts and found as parents, their decision impacts you. So we kind of want to advertise that and really get the message out. So we're going to Bingham High just got a new mental health room. And these students and we have somebody who wants to be included in the want their peers to know. They're members of the suicide prevention group Hope Squad, and their urgency boils down to this. Suicide is the number one cause of death among Utah teens. About 40 Utah teens each year die by suicide. Uh, we spend a lot of time focusing on our school and the kids in our school who need help being heard and being seen. We have been in a five alarm fire. Thousands of Utah teenagers are thinking about suicide. Student Health and Risk Prevention, or SHARP, surveys administered every two years show in a classroom of 30 10th graders, 20 percent, or six of them, have seriously considered suicide. And almost as many have actually made a plan. By not addressing it, we're basically just letting somebody suffer in silence. And that was why Representative Steve Ellison passed a law in 2020 that provides $500,000 each year for schools to provide mental health screenings. For decades, uh, schools have screened students for vision issues, hearing issues, but for mental health issues, which is the number one cause of death for children in Utah, which is suicide, we didn't do anything for a long time. Right now, fewer than half of Utah school districts participate in the screening program. This is a list of the 17 districts that have opted in. They're missing out on one of the greatest tools that are available to them. Schools aren't the only ones missing out. Parents can also apply to use their district's pot of money to help pay for counseling, insurance deductibles, or other things when the screening recommends treatment they can't afford. But when the district opts out, that funding isn't available. So few districts applied, a new bill poses a deadline. July 1st, districts have to report they're in or they're out. Is it frustrating to you? It's very frustrating. I would give anything to have my boys back, anything. Troy Slaymaker lost his 14-year-old to suicide. He was the glue in our family. Three years later, his oldest son also died by suicide. Slaymaker knew there were issues, but didn't realize how serious or know what to do. That's one of my biggest regrets is that I never got my oldest son help. We have the ability to assess it and to also offer resources to get them the help. It, that's a no-brainer. So why don't more school districts take part? The state school board lets them choose for themselves and acknowledges some may be leery of screening for mental health problems when they don't have the resources to help students. Because what happens when somebody says yes to these questions? Where will they go for help then? Many districts not taking part in mental health screenings are in central Utah. Staley says these areas also tend to have the most access to guns, alcohol, and fewest resources. Yet this is precisely where the state shows teen suicide rates are in some cases double. And so if we do these screenings, and I think we should, um, and people are in need, then let's figure out where to take them. We asked districts why they don't take part. In Davis, we have those partnerships that have been established for years. Because of that, we have a system in place that is working and continues to work. Davis already offers student and family mental health screening events. Severe says they appreciate the support, but they're hesitant to implement mental health screenings right now because they're already doing so much in this area. Granite District plans to opt into the program next year. Jordan District does all the things the state asks with screenings, but didn't apply for funding. Leaders say screenings have saved lives by getting families resources and starting difficult discussions. It's always helpful if it facilitates open, caring connections and conversations. That's the key to kids having what they need to get through a difficult time. Representative Ellison has another reason he's pushing for screenings to prevent school shootings. The same screenings that could identify suicide risk could also flag other mental illness before it leads to scenes like these. I wouldn't want to be a member of a school board that had walked away from a program like this and decided not to give parents the option to help their children 
and then later find out that a student in that district had died by suicide or, heaven forbid, they had a mass shooting. He hopes those serious issues will encourage more districts to get on board. If you want to know whether your district takes part in the state's funding for screenings, we have a list along with our story on ksltv.com. And then all day tomorrow, KSL is dedicating our coverage to teens in crisis. A recent CDC survey showed increased sadness and mental distress among teen girls, LGBTQ youth, and minority groups. We look into what efforts are being made right here in Utah to help our teens. Pretty eye-opening. Great story there, Dee. Thanks.